Technology Club meets today at lunch in room 126. There will be another awesome game play, so you don't want to miss out. So we go 7 goes into 21 3 times, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 goes in there 7, 7 times 2 is 14. The answer, two versions, 26 over 21 or 1 and tw uh, five. 5, 5 over 21, yes, something like that. Two points, two points. I, you know, something happened in my screen projector and I haven't figured quite out how to adjust <laughs> All right, I don't know if you recognize this. This problem is exactly a problem from last week. I didn't even mess with the numbers. This is 116, 64, uh, equal arms, equal elbows, 64. Add it up, 64, 64, 128, 52, 38. Take that away from 180, divide by 2, 71, 71. We're not done. 116 and 64. This is how you grade this. Start at 5 and then take a half point away for everyone that it wrong. Say, or is missing, either wrong or missing, especially the ones on the outside. If you watch the videos, these last three are pretty painless. Translation is like slow. Reflection, like so. Rotation, I'll give you several versions. There's a slight rotation, 90 degrees and 180. Any one of those. One point a piece down there at the bottom. Well, I'll have to take a look at Okay, so we're going to get one point piece, but that one's obviously blank. Okay, score out of 10 and return. Score out of 10 and return. Go to page two, please. Uh, take a look at page two. Page two. I have a short video. It's about five minutes. I'm going to ask you uh, three questions. Raise your hand if this it applies to you. How many of you have seen a 3D movie in the past year? 3D movie in the past year. Quickly tell a neighbor what was that 3D movie. Go. All right, second question. Ready? Question number two. What's not? Question number two. How many of you have played a video game with computer graphics in it? That's pretty much defined. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's two. Now, third one. How many of you at home have a quilt hand-sewn by a friend or family? A quilt hand-sewn by a friend or family. Okay, last one. How many of you have ever seen a mosaic tiling? Mosaic tiling. Okay. I found, I saw some really amazing mosaic tiling. I was at the Taj Mahal this summer. Anybody been there? Oh, yeah. Gotta go. Oh, uh, maybe not. <laughs> now, believe it or not, mosaic tiling, grandma's quilt, CG effects, and 3D movies actually have something in common. Actually have something in common. What we're learning today is called geometric motion. Look at page two and likes, please, Camille. You're taking notes on page two. For the next five minutes, you are taking notes on page two. Really? Is this Jurassic Park? Oh. It, it, it has clips of it. Clips of it. Jurassic Park? Of Jurassic Park, yes. Yay. Have you ever seen a real live dinosaur or yes. dragon? Yes. Do you have it? Because scientists have determined that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. And you know that dragons only flare their nostrils and breathe fire in fairy tales. But that doesn't stop animators from trying to bring both creatures to life on film. Using computer animation and motion geometry, artists take dinosaurs and dragons from science and fiction to the screen. Go behind the scenes to see how the biggest special in animal planet history was created. They transform geometric shapes using translations or slides, moving a shape from one location to another without changing its orientation, size, or shape. Rotations or turns, making the figure rotate about a single point or axis along a circle. And reflections or flips, 
reflecting one shape to the other side to produce its mirror image. These transformations help artists build the creatures on screen with depth and the sense of motion, making the animals and the world look real. We set out to make dragons as convincing as possible. Let's have a look. Dragons flapping their wings and wagging their tails. Dinosaurs running, fighting, and craning their necks. Does watching all this make you wonder how they do that? Creating such detailed moving images on a computer can be broken down to simple geometric shapes and their transformations. How did this dinosaur walk across the earth? The artist uses a translation to create the illusion of movement by shifting a shape from one location to another without changing its shape, size, or orientation. See, the shape, size, and orientation don't change, just the position. The transformation makes it look as though the dinosaur is walking. The same concept applies to the footprints it leaves behind. The artist has created a pattern of footprints by translating each one forward from one location to the next without changing its shape, size, or orientation. We can replace the footprints with triangles. See how the shape's location changes and nothing else? These transformations reinforce our perception of the dinosaur's motion, and before we know it, they have us wrapped up in an animated world that seems real. Another technique of motion geometry that artists and their creatures really couldn't do without is called a rotation or a turn. These dragons, courting one another by free falling with feet clasped together, look like they're rotating in the air. That's because artists move the shapes that make up the dragons about an axis, creating the perception that they're actually spinning. See, each simple shape rotates along a circle around the axis. In geometry, a rotation changes the orientation of a shape, but not its size. All righty, guys. So you have a couple more questions that have not been done. Take a look at your notes. Finish page two. Read it through. A couple more questions. There's a diagram for you to fill out. Lights coming on. Coming on. You're supposed to take a look here. You're supposed to be answering questions, guys, for points. Page two. This is part of your sign-off today. Page two. You have three minutes. Finish page two, please. Then to go on to page three and four. Three and four. And then you're going to check three and four up here. So right now you're finishing page two. Right now you're finishing page two.
Okay, go to page three. Guys, on page three, there's a small image. Here's a larger image of what you have there on page three. If you have a hard time seeing the tessellation, which is the interlocking image, on page three, it talks about the white and the light gray and the dark gray lizards. That's the big image of it, if you need help seeing that. You're working on pages three and four, pages three and four right now. And when you're done with three and four, check the board. When you're done with three and four, check the board. I do. You got a good, good eye. Wait, what? Amanda noticed that this is the same poster in the back. You can talk right now, guys. Yeah. Read stuff that's loud as you're working. Okay, why don't you come up here at the beginning? Okay, so the first two said, looking from white to white, what's that motion from white to white? What the fancy name is? The fancy name for starts with a T. Translation? Translation. Okay, and from dark to dark, what's the motion? No, no from dark to dark. It's a slide as well, which is also... Translation. Okay, now so that third one, read the instructions out loud. Okay, once you want to read number one out loud? Russell, can we read number one out loud? So you look up here. They're all laying down. Yeah, well, no, from white. To white, what's the motion? Translation, rotation, or reflection? Yeah, it's it's the slide. Do you see it? It's a slide. So it's translation. Yes, the first one's translation. Now for you to go from the white to the dark gray to the light gray, what's this motion? Rotation. Ah, yes. Students, when you're done with three and four, you're going to take a few minutes and work on your chapter three study guide until we wait for part two. Great, so we get our study guide right now? Yeah, you can get out your study guide. It's fine. Okay. Explain. How do you know? Okay, look. It's not reflection. Look at the, the white to the light gray, dark gray. What's that motion? Look between those three. What, what is this? Rotation. That's not reflection, that is rotation. So I want you to explain. How do you know it's rotation? What motion it goes in a circle? Yes. Uh, the first one, that's the translation. That's translation. If you look from dark lizard to dark lizard, it's a slide motion. You see it? It's a slide motion. Yes. To reflect that, how you doing that? How about, so I'm doing this one with Mr. Goody over here. Why don't you join me? Okay. If I were to take that reflection, needs to be a mirror. What would a mirror image look like? Yeah. Would the 180 be Okay. If I were to take this and rotate it 90 degrees, any direction, what would it look like? 
That would be one way. If you were to rotate counterclockwise, yeah, it would come out. If you were to rotate clockwise, it would come down. Attention high school classes. At this time, please dismiss all the seniors to the softball field. Seniors, please go to the softball field. I would take the yellow table and eighty of them in your picture. Also, seniors, as you go out there and you're a lifer, when you get out here, okay. That's what I want you to do. Okay. All the seniors and the senior teachers, please go to the softball field now. Thank you. Hi there. Thanks. I don't understand how to do this. Page five, guys. Go to page five, and you need three different colors out. Page five. Three different colors, please. This is easy, easy, easy. You will finish, but we have to do what takes about seven minutes. You'll probably finish in ten, and again, tell me if you can you need three different colors out, please. That's beautiful. Much better than I could have done. Okay, ready? Step one. I'd like you to draw, please, a scaling right triangle. A scaling right triangle. We're page five. We're kind of right where you left off. Draw a scaling right triangle. Draw a scaling right triangle, please. Now we're going to take that right triangle and we're going to rotate it 180. So take that right triangle and just turn it 180 and it's going to look like this. Now when you turn it, you're going to label it PQR using your three colors. I want you to notice something. So get one of your three colors. After you draw that second triangle, get a color in your hat. We have A. A is here. A matches with P. So it must be in a similar position. Switching colors. B goes with Q. C goes with R. Put a giant cr congruent sign between them. Because it's the same triangle, all you did was take one triangle and turn it. You have congruent triangles here. The whole is equal. The whole is equal. Say that after me. The whole is equal. If the whole is equal, the Parts are equal. So let's start marking the parts. This is what I mean. That means angle A is congruent to angle P. That means angle B is congruent to angle Q. And C is congruent to R. So what we have here is three congruent angles. We also have three congruent sides. Short, medium, long. We have three congruent sides as well. 
Three congruent angles, three congruent sides. There's a specific name for this. I'm going to give you the technical name, then I'm going to give you the slang for it. The technical and then the slang. What's going on here is something called this. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are is congruent. Are congruent, excuse me. The simple way of saying this, put your pencils down, please. Hold up two hands like so. Hold up two hands. Hold up two hands like so. Repeat after me. Say holes equal. So if your whole hand is equal, then the parts, wiggle your fingers, say parts equal. Parts equal. I'm going to do two problems with you that demonstrate this, and then you guys are on your own the rest of class period. You're going to do page six. Uh, where did I put it? Yeah, over there. Do page six, check six. Do seven, check seven. Do eight, check eight. I sign off. You're done. Then you go back to your study guide. Okay, we're right here at the bottom. Using your first color. It says angle D is congruent to angle D. Sweep, D, sweep D. Desk, desk. Hatch, hatch. Using your first color. Pick up your second color. E is congruent to E. Notice it's exactly the same position. So we go over here. E congruent to E. Last color, F is congruent to H. That's your three congruent angles. To do your congruent sides, you're going to do eyebrow, eyebrow, smiley. So eyebrow, eyebrow. DE is congruent to DE. So one hatch mark there. Do your first eyebrow. Second eyebrow, E to F is congruent to E to H. E to F eyebrow is congruent to E to H, your second eyebrow. Well, I'll do an E to F and E to H. It's your second eyebrow. Now, smiley, DF is congruent to DH. I'm going to do one more with you to make sure you guys know how to do this. Now look, there's the translation, rotation, and reflection. I want you to write in what motion do you think is going in there. Don't say it out loud. Write it in. What motion is, th is represented by this? Write it down. Go. Do not say it out loud yet. Write it down what you think it is. What's the motion going on there? How many of you wrote reflection? Raise your hand. Reflection, yes, this is a butterfly. It's a butterfly. Reflection. Reflection. I'm going to do one more with you. Go to top of page seven, please. Top of page seven. Excuse me, six. Six. Top of page six. I'm going to do one more with you guys. Make sure you know what's going on here. Nice and big. Yes. Okay, step number one. Get your three colors. It says A to B. Now be very careful. Notice A and B. It's not, and you have two angles here. Be very careful. It's not the whole angle. It's only half of one side. Okay, so you're going to go here. That's A. That's B. It's one per each triangle. Okay. Then this says B to A. So it's the other B to the other A. Then it's C to Y. 
like so. Three different colors. Now we do eyebrow, eyebrow, smiley. So eyebrow, eyebrow, smiley, eyebrow, eyebrow, smiley. It says AB to BA. That's the reflexive one in the middle. BC to AY, so that's the double hatch. Mm -hmm. Parallelogram. And then A all the way to C, and then B all the way to Y. Now look very carefully between the left and the right triangle. Determine what is the motion going on there. What is the motion? Okay, I'll let you figure out the motion. All right, you guys need to finish page six, do six, finish seven, do seven, finish eight, do eight. Sign off. Okay, I'm going to turn on the light. Thank <laughs> you.